recording and I'll um, do a formal introduction. So, all right, here we are. Hi, everybody. Hi, Edward, Peter, Marty. Good to see you guys. This is Chi Talk, and I'm very happy to be back. <laughs> and uh, we're going to make it more regularly now, this uh, Chi Talks. Uh, and the idea of this uh, of these series is to really uh, connect with healing energy, to spread the word of healing energy, to uh, uh, have some insight to, for people to come and have uh, ask questions or share some insight about their own story. And we usually just, uh, um, you know, every time we, we pick up a topic, I pick up a topic, but the questions or the inspiration story doesn't have to relate to these, uh, to these topics. So uh, feel free to just uh, ask or whatever it is. Uh, today's topic is, is healing uh, the body healing pain in the body and more specifically uh, healing our back. You know, I, uh, there's many, many people that suffer from uh, lower back or uh, back, back problem. Actually, I was looking it up and uh, they say that uh, the one, number one reason for people to miss work is because of, uh, of back issues, back pain uh, in the United States. Number one reason that people miss, miss work uh, 80% of all Americans would, uh, at some point in their life, would would suffer from back issues. And what is that all about? And uh, and what what is and, and that that kind of opens the 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 uh, the discussion about pain and about about body issue, uh, body pain. So I thought we can just share and talk a little bit about it. Also, uh, this Sunday I'm gonna. We're going to do a workshop, a three hour uh, online workshop about uh, healing the spine. And uh, we're going to go deeper into some methods and techniques, not only body technique and movement technique and strengthening techniques, but also working with the mind and working with, the, with our energy, with our chi. All right. So uh, this uh, chi talk is going to uh, transcribe into the podcast called Awaken the Healer Within like always and let's do kind of like a, a little ceremony a beginning ceremony and let's start by closing our eyes and noticing our body feeling the body and as we come in we closing the eyes we feel the body just let's draw our attention to the feet yeah the feet is where our body is uh connecting with the earth, with gravity. Gravity is a very strong force that we are trying to align ourselves with this force. Uh, and uh, most of us are sitting right now. And so let's uh, also put attention on the sit bones and feel the weight, the density, the thickness of the body and the weight of the body resting. If you're standing then on the feet, or if you're sitting on the chair beneath you. And as you are feeling the body inwardly, we feeling it's just as physical body, as sensation, feeling the sensation in the body, it puts the pressure on the, on the chair. And scan the body, scan the, the lower back, the mid back, the upper back. just to see if there's any tension or tightness anywhere in the body. The shoulders, just kind of travel through the body to check what do we feel in terms of physical sensation in different parts of the body. Some area feel more light, some area feel more heavy, some area feel dense.
And so we re really just want to tune into physicality, yeah? thickness. Maybe you, maybe you can feel the heartbeat. Maybe you can, you know, just physical sensation. See if you can, uh, if you, if you notice an area of tension <clears throat> or tightness. See if you can uh, breathe some spaciousness into this area. Just think spaciousness as you inhale into this area. Lightness. And kindness. Without waiting for a feedback from the body to respond to what you're doing, just doing. And noticing that with no effort on our part, the body is breathing. See if you can think about the whole body as you breathe. Breathe in healing energy, breathe in spaciousness. When we breathe in, we take in energy from the environment. So we can think about breathing from a beautiful space in nature, from the most sacred energy source into the body. As you breathe in, you can again say a word like lightness or love. And when we exhale, we give our breath back to the universe. Let's bring the hands to the heart center. This is noon time, at least in Pacific time. It's a time of the heart meridian. It's really great to engage with practices like meditation and soft breathing technique with an inner smiling energy to the heart. Let's uh, put attention to something we are grateful for that happened today already. And to this moment that we are together, connected. This miracle called the internet. <laughs> open the hands to the side, let's open the eyes. Beautiful. I hope that was, uh, <laughs> that felt good. So um, yeah, that's very interesting. The, the dealing with pain and what pain is and specifically lower back. And why do a lot of people have problems with their lower back? <laughs> why we all have problems with our back? Yeah, either upper back or most people lower back. So uh, a lot of it is lifestyle. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about it. the workshop. Would be more about resolving it and and finding solution to it. But just for now, for the for the talk, 
it's very interesting. There was a very big um, experiment or uh, research done uh, by a doctor called John, uh, uh, Dr. Sarn, Dr. Sarn. He was a back surgeon and quit to do back surgeries. He quit to do back surgeries and wrote a book uh, about healing, the, healing uh, our spine, healing our back. But what he discovered is that he did many, many uh, x-ray on uh, or scans. Uh, I don't remember if it was an x-ray or a CT scan, but it was scanned to scan that could see like abnormality in the spine. What he discovered that people, his patients that, um, that suffer from lower back problem for different from herniated discs and from abnormality in the spine, uh, what he found is that he took also normal people that don't have any problem with their lower back or back problem. And he found that the same percentage of people that have uh, problems in their, in their back uh, in, with herniated discs, this, the people that don't feel it have the same abnormalities. So the same abnormalities, herniated disc or whatever it is, that he found the same percentage of people that he found that have problem with lower back, or, or just spine problem, the same percentage of people that didn't suffer at all with any, any back issues. And uh, so that was very interesting finding and, uh, and that triggered him into, uh, into a different route and he stopped doing surgery. He was a back surgeon for many, many years. So late in his life, he kind of stopped and he started uh, healing people with with energy with uh, you know so this is what we come to the to the whole issue the whole subject of stress i had the opportunity and the privilege to work with a woman that suffered from lower back and uh for for years and she really had hard time with uh even uh, at work yes so she uh she was a secretary and the what I, what I, the way, the way I helped her and resolved her lower back problem completely, by the way, and I'm very privileged to, that she really did it and worked with me is that just by a certain breathing technique that I gave her to do, it has nothing to do with, uh, with hips movement or spinal undulation or anything like that. <laughs> very interesting, right? So just some breathing technique. What is this breathing technique? Yeah. So pain is inflammation. Pain is uh, a way that the body, now I don't say that all pain, you know, if you have an accident and injury and the body and the spine got injured, of course, there's pain that related to the accident and to that thing. But a lot of times, that's what Dr. Sarno also found that a lot of the, the big cases, the big problems, the majority of the cases, it's, it's really stress related. And, and it comes again and again that I find so many people that say that I don't have any stress. I don't have any stress in my life. We're not aware of how we hold stress in our different areas in, in the body. And, um, and stress is, uh, is, 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 really a form of inflammation, emotional inflammation that manifests itself in the body. Yeah, there's always a relationship between uh, body and mind. Do we need to move the body to heal the spine? Do we need to move to heal pain? Yeah, it helps. Why does it help? Because it, so it goes to the idea of chi, what chi is. Yeah, how do we heal with energy? Chi is just life force energy. How do we heal with our life force energy? With the energy of our mind, with the energy of our breath, with the energy of our heart, and with the energy of the body. So if you would do any physical activity, you create some sort of energy. If you do it in an agitated state of mind, it, it would tend to put more oil to the flame. You know, it's, it's actually now science say that if you're angry, a lot of people, when they're angry, they go and work out. They like uh, swim or run and to release the anger. And actually now we're finding more, this is new research, that if you, uh, if you are in a not good emotional state and you do physical exercise, it actually makes that worse, which is very interesting. This is new. 
And in Qigong, what we do, we say the opposite. If you are having inflammation, emotional or any other inflammation, you don't go and make more inflammation. <laughs> you don't go and for, for a sprint. You don't go and, and, and hit, a, hit like a, if a boxer, you know, something boxing, they, they do the boxing <laughs> to release the energy. Actually, actually, or, or you know, I, I, I remember this one, a friend of mine, she said that uh, because of the COVID, her father is very, very stressed. So they give him all these uh, Zumba classes and active classes. I told him no, and he doesn't help him. I told her, no, you cannot heal somebody with young, with more fire you actually need to cool, you need water, right? If there's inflammation, what is it? It's fire, inflammation, flame, right? Flame comes from the word fire, inflammation. You cannot do it with more flame. You need to cool it off, yeah, the yin and yang. So you need more water. What would be water? Water types of breathing, right? Uh, techniques to, techniques to, uh, to, calm the, to calm the mind and to have a little bit more sensitive, sensitive, to heighten the sensitivity to subtle energy. So we can do it through movement, we can do it through heighten our awareness to subtle energy, we can do it through breath, there's all kinds of ways. And the best is to combine all of these together. That's what I found. But uh, sometimes one technique uh, would, be, would be better than others. So, um, so that's, uh, that's, I hope that's kind of like uh, opening um, an interesting discussion about about pain in general and uh, what we do in pain usually. And you don't do it consciously. We don't do it consciously. If I come with a needle and I poke you, won't you jump? You would jump. If you like it or not, you will do it. Everybody, every animal that I would do it, everybody. This is just intuitive. So intuitively, like immediately reactionally, if you have pain somewhere in the body, you would hate it. It's almost like the needle that I, you would just don't like it. You would just start to block it. So the mind would not go there. The mind would not want to go there. It just would not want to go there. You don't want to feel it because it doesn't feel good. You start to eliminate that area in the body you start to separate it. And that's something that everybody does, if you like it or not. <laughs> and um, the way to heal is actually not to separate it. <laughs> so working with pain and working with our body discomforts, it's about uh, opening. Uh, sometimes Edward said it, say yes to everything that comes your way. And uh, it's opening to what you feel, opening to the sensation. Opening to the sensation is a sensation. We just label it as pain. But some people get pleasure out of pain. <laughs> right? What would it say? Something intense sensation. Intense sensation can be pain. Actually, intense sensation can be also pleasure, if you think about it. But uh, so it's, it's a label. It's a label that the mind does. It's, it's, something, it's something that happens in the body. The body tell you, hey, I want, I need some attention. It's like a crying kid, a kid that's a, So what we do in our, uh, in our healing process is to go into this area and to open, to, to accept it, <laughs> to actually go deeper into it, to go deeper into it underneath what the label and when you eventually got underneath the label things are starting to heal uh i have many many stories in my own my myself this is how i got to this how i got to teach this so um so this is uh, kind of like a very short synopsis about and um about healing pain or dealing with body body sensations uh, and back issues. Um, that, does it mean that this is all what it is? It's only in the mind? No, there's no mind and the mind and the body are one system. <laughs> Again, things 
strengthening the, the strengthening parts of the spine, there's also physical components. So physical component, but also the mind component, very important to realize it because we're living in a, in a world, in an era that everything is physical and material and we don't put a lot of energy into the, into the, other, the other side of things and uh, invisible energy like emotion, stress, mental energy. And that would really, that would really could aggravate or heal. So that's very important to, uh, to incorporate into uh, any healing practice. So this is why Qigong is a great combination of, uh, of physical, mental, emotional. I just wanted to kind of open this talk <laughs> and see if anybody wants to chime in something from their experience or a question from what I said, or even tell me that I'm wrong. <laughs> okay, Edward, go ahead. You, you. You're, you're never wrong. You're so right. Um, <laughs> you know, I picked up so many things from you. And in the early 2000s, I bought myself a two-seater Mercedes, and I ended up with sciatica and stenosis. And when I went to the back doctor for incredible pain, couldn't even step on my leg, couldn't stand. Uh, he said, it's the seat in the car. You're too low. And that's why today everyone's buying SUVs and they're more comfortable, you know, in, in, a, in a higher seat. But what I learned from you, even when we do the good night Qigong and mm -hmm. you do the swastika pose for each mm -hmm. side, and I, I introduce you to Anat, and she was the one who cured me going through the pain of my lower back. Uh -huh. And then you, with the, the breath, I can crack my back in bed at night my spine by breathing in and I just hear the cracks and then let, you know, letting it out, I'm adjusting myself. But what I do every night when I get in bed is the pose that you give us in the good night Qigong, where I have my legs one way and the other way and I'm stretching my lower back. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, sometimes there'll be a little pain, but you just go through it to get to the other end of, of, of healing. So between your tips of taking that deep breath and then feeling the crack of my spine adjusting and then getting up in the morning and the first thing I do before I get out of bed is stretch again mm -hmm. and pull the lower back, pull it. And it's pain-free now for the last, whatever, 10 years, whatever it, it is. So you've really helped and what you're saying is really good stuff. It's the truth. And, and sometimes the pain feels good. That stretch <laughs> feels good. So you're right on in what you're saying. So thank oh, you. Good. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Edward. That's beautiful. <laughs> thank you for sharing. Hey, Marty. Hi. This class is so important because I have a friend. I wish, Ed, you could talk to my friend. I mean, he's in his 70s and it's his lifestyle too with a lot of pain in his life and it's all in his lower back. And he has tried everything, seen every type of doctor, had one of those stimulators or two of them inserted in his back, but nothing helps. And it's kind of interesting because um, it, I feel he's kind of addicted to pain also, when you say that that pain gives you pleasure um, and how powerful your mind is that can take over your body. And then you just saying about laying in bed and being able to do a breathing exercise and how you crack your, your back, how your mind and your body, everything's connected. So this is a very interesting class. I'd like, I'd like my friend to take your Sunday class. Yeah. But I don't know if he has the patience to sit and listen. That's a whole other subject when people are not open or so into their pain that they're not open to finding out really what would help them. You know, he keeps going to a doctor saying yeah. it doesn't work. There's all these things that combine to get into a healthy body and especially I, as we age. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. No, I would love to help your, your friend. I would love to work with him even one-on-one -on -one if that's more suitable, but definitely if he can join the class. The class on Sunday would be recorded. I mean, it is three hours, but you can digest it slowly. And uh, it's he can 
watch it laying down, not even sitting. It's very interesting that you can, when we say sitting, and that's another thing that there's so many things to talk about lower back, but we have a culture of, we have more chairs than humans in the world, you know, and uh, that's part of the problem. Because actually there's actually twice the amount of pressure on your lower back when we are sitting. <laughs> And actually sitting was related to, um, they saw that people that are sitting more, they have lower lifespan and it's interesting. And that's a part of the, in Chinese medicine, it's part of the, uh, the kidney energy is a longevity. And you really want to not have a lot of tension on the. So when we stand or lay down, or when we are in motion, that's much healthier than sitting. And our way of sitting is sitting on a chair is very different than, you know, what we, many years ago, like a cross leg, when you wiggle and swig, squiggle, and we always move, there's constant movement. Now there's, there's no movement and uh, lack of movement. We're gonna, gonna talk about more in class, but I really, really encourage you to tell your friend to come to class. He's gonna learn a lot. He's gonna learn a, a lot of stuff, uh, very inspiring to heal himself. And I, I think that's the most powerful way that we can heal because uh, you know you are with yourself 24 seven. The doctor is with you just an hour, maybe a week. <laughs> <laughs> and when you, when you become your own healer, it's a different story. You always, you can always do the, the energy. Um, you can always work with your energy. So that's very powerful. Yeah, thank you for sharing. This is, uh, this is powerful. Yeah, Edward, go ahead. You just used the magic word. That's what I do. I squiggle my back. <laughs> squiggle. I squiggle the lower back. I'm doing it right now. And, yeah, squiggle. And, okay, and that's what it feels great. Let's do it. <laughs> squiggle. <laughs> Have you wiggle ever sat on one of those round balls? Have you ever sat at, at, you know, on a round ball and then just kind of wiggle around? Yes. That's at the gym. Sure. At the gym. Yeah. I used to use it at my desk at work. I brought yeah. one. And then mm -hmm. there's a chair for kids that is a wiggle chair. In fact, I almost bought one for my grandson because he likes to wiggle. And But when he wiggles, he actually is learning better. But when you make him sit still, he, his brain shuts off. So this right. chair lets them move their body and move their brain. And so, yeah. <laughs> and, and that's how you create chi through movement. Yeah. That's how I, you create uh, a, 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 the opposite of stagnation. We, I'll give you, I'll give some really powerful example in the, in the workshop. You'll see really movement is the key. Movement and Ellie, key. since you and Qigong, I don't sit and watch the warriors for three hours. <laughs> I stand and I'm doing all my Qigong exercises. Great. great. Because and, and you get done and you feel great. And it's not about, I stood for two hours or three hours. It's, I don't even think about it. I just feel good. Because I'm moving. Mm -hmm. So that movement. part is, yeah. Movement is key for, for health and for a uh, long life and for happiness. We move the chi. This is why after uh, 10 hours of flight, you're not getting out of the flight and say, wow, I rested for 10 <laughs> hours, right? No, you're, you're like drained. <laughs> you're, feeling, you're feeling drained, aren't you? Right? So movement is key for... Uh, <laughs> for feeling alive so um but we'll 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 really talk more yeah marty bring your bring your friend he should be in this workshop <laughs> all right guys thank you so much peter do you have anything to say i see that you unmuted yourself yeah marty i want to i want to piggyback on something that you said that i think is so important about your friend uh that I think you used the phrase addiction to pain. Um, and we, we all have a lot of addictions, however you define it. And um, I suffer from anxiety and depression. Um, I don't have physical pain other than being a little bit older. Um, uh, but I think what Qigong can really do is help us understand that 
we shouldn't be so comfortable with these addictions. Like, like if we know pain, okay, if we're very familiar with pain, and if I or my friend is very, very familiar with depression, that's known to us because as humans, we fear the unknown, right? So your friend, maybe, I'm no psychologist, therapist, I'm just saying, your friend may be, may be afraid of feeling good. And maybe as someone who suffers from depression, I might be afraid of feeling happy because I don't necessarily know what that feels like. So I think what Ellie said is so important and I'm gonna go back when he said, if you're feeling really stressed, don't do something young, do something more yin. When I'm actually feeling not terribly good emotionally, whether it's depression, anxiety, or just sadness or grief or whatever, because of whatever, I'm a strong believer in art and music therapy. <laughs> sit down and draw, sit down and, and sing, get up and dance, you know? And I just wanted to say, I love, I love Marty, what you said about your friend, you know, addiction to pain, meaning they're so used to pain possibly that that's all they know. Right. And they might actually even be afraid of being pain free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so we have to, in my opinion, sorry, I don't want to sound like, we just have to go out of our comfort zone and, and just dance and sing and make art and do Qigong and walk in nature and be in silence. So Ellie, I love the fact that you said that there's a difference um, in your practice to actually know when it should be yin versus yang. Mm -hmm. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, Edward. Very, very quickly, it just my father was so good with me with all this, with all the, the sayings and the wisdom. But just remember this for everything. It's mind over matter. It's mind over matter. And Ellie, you were so helpful because I had that whiplash thing with my uh, arm and I did whatever, three, four lessons with you. And it, it really helps. And I just gave it up. And guess what? <laughs> you know, it's gone. Mind over matter. Yeah. And when you tell us, visualize your head, or the, I can put my mind and actually feel my head inside or it's or my arm mind over matter yeah it's your decision and your commitment right yeah yeah and yeah beautiful thank you guys practice it always <laughs> remember to practice it that's sometimes when we get caught up in that mindset and we need to like quiet the mind and the body and just kind of breathe and then the situation sometimes it looks different Beautiful. Yeah. And breath is amazing. A tool to, to get to where we need to, to get. So let's, let's finish with the breath. Let's put both hands on the lower abdomen. Actually, let's put one on the lower abdomen, one on the heart. Let's start with the, with the wave breathing. So let's close the eyes and relax our body. And when we breathe in, we breathe in into the lower abdomen, then up to the rib cage and chest. and exhale all the way out. So as we breathe in, it's almost like the breath is water and you're filling up your glass, your body with water, with the breath. So it comes from the bottom, it goes up. <coughs> so inhale, lower abdomen, rib cage, chest. Exhale, chest, rib cage, lower abdomen. that would harmonize the emotional body and the physical body. And as you visit with these areas on the inhale, from the bottom up, try to make friends with them. 
Try to smile into the lower abdomen, abdomen area, the liver, the rib cage, and the heart to the top. And have the kind of attitude of love and kindness aimed into your own kids, your own internal organs that take care of you 24-7. Aiming a, yeah, an attention mixed with love and kindness at yourself would start the process of healing. Let's put both hands on the navel now and rest the breath in the lower abdomen. Let your mind be very sharp on a point, on an area between the navel and the opposite point on the spine behind the navel. There's this, the navel. If you draw a line to the back, you meet the second lumbar vertebrae. The space in between the two points and watch that space getting larger on the inhale and smaller on the exhale. Attention is very focused, very sharp. to a point that you can even, you can feel that you are there. You are disassemble yourself and reassemble yourself in that area. Feel the peace inside all the treasures that we seek are always inside of us already. Don't need to go anywhere. Don't need to travel anywhere, just into our own energy. Find peace and power. This is the center of peace and power combined. Nice, and let's open the hands to the side, open the eyes. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful meditation, uh, concentration meditation, really trigger a, a very interesting uh, brain waves. <laughs> I'm sure you felt it. <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you, Marty, Peter. Thank you, Edward, for coming here. <laughs> and I hope to see you in class uh, soon or on Sunday in the workshop. Bye. Bye. See you.